Welcome to the application delivery how-to video series. My name is Sean and today we're going to cover the topic of how to set up headers to determine client IP. This will be for a more advanced use case and I'll explain what that is now. So this is our scenario. Our client is establishing a connection for the virtual service avinetworks.felab.in. And you can see the IP information below. You also get an idea of our service engine or our load balancer IP information below that and what we're using to connect to those backend servers. So in this case, we already have an application profile that's inserting an XFF header called X client IP and it has that client IP information. But our backend servers want more information. They want the full picture of what that client is connecting to. And that comes to the virtual service IP as well as the virtual service port. So they want a new header that's gonna look something like this, where it's gonna be called X client connection. And it will have the client IP and port information for the source info, and then the destination info of virtual service IP and virtual service port. So we need to build some customization to get this to work. And we'll jump into that now. Mm -hmm. So on the controller, I need to do some customization. I need to collect IP information, port information, and I need to string it all together. Now, the way I'm gonna do this is leveraging our data scripts. Our data scripts is what we use to do these very special use case type operations. So let's take a look at that now. So I'm gonna go to templates, I'm going to look at scripts and here's data script. I've already started configuring it. Uh, I got the IP information and the port information. So let's take a look at what I've done. So here we have it under HTTP request event script. I've collected client IP. I've collected client port. And then here's the VS IP and VS port. I'm using some functions that we have packaged into the controller. So these functions come with the controller. Um, and I'll, we'll look to how to get those functions in a second. And then once I get this in information, I want to string it together. I want it to be one long string for that header. So I'm going to do that ahead of time and build a new variable called header value. And it's going to be client IP. And these dot dots just concatenate all these objects together. So you can see I do client IP, two periods, colon, two periods, client port. So that's gonna string those two variables together. And then we go on to string the VS IP and VS port together. So now I need to figure out how to add that header. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually look to what functions come packaged on this controller. And how we do this is we go to the Avi Networks KB articles. And in the Avi Networks KB articles, they have all these different functions from string uh, searches, layer four, virtual services, and pools. Now, since there's so many, it's easier just to do a search operation. So if I was looking for the VS IP, this is how I found the virtual service IP. So if you're looking for something specific to the virtual service, you would do VS IP. If you're looking for something specific to the pool, you would do pool and then find the functions for pool. So in this case, I wanna do headers. So I'm just gonna do a search for header. And the first one I get is to add header. So this is what we wanna do. And this is what it looks like. And this is where the events need to be defined. So if I jump back to my controller, we can see HTTP request event script and HTTP request. So these match up. Now for parameters, I need a name, which will be that X client connection and a value, which is that header value variable that we strung together. And then there's a little example here. So now I have everything I need. So let's jump back to the controller. I'm gonna paste in what I just copied and we're gonna build that string. So X client connection. So since that's a string, I have to put quotes around it. And then I'm gonna call the variable. Since it's a variable, I don't need to put quotes around it. So let's save this configuration. Perfect, but we're not there yet. Now I need to bind that data script to my virtual service. So we're gonna jump back to the applications tab and we're gonna go look at this virtual service. I'm gonna click edit, I'm gonna go to policies, data scripts, and now we need to add that data script. And there it is. Save data script and then save the virtual service. 
So now that data script should be applied. So let's jump to my terminal and test it out. So on my terminal, I've already got my curl command in. I'm just gonna execute. We got a 200 okay, so everything looks good so far. I'm hoping I'll see a log for that uh, request now. So let's jump back to the UI. On the UI, I'm gonna go to logs, non-significant since it was a 200 okay, and let's refresh. Here we go. So this is likely my request. So I'm gonna drop this down. And it looks like it was a fairly recent request. I see all my client IP, virtual service IP, that backend server is responding with 200 okay. Let's check view all headers. Here it is, X client connection. So we have our header and it has that source and destination string that we're expecting. So this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. Mission complete. So now that backend server has a full picture of the connections being made to the application. Thank you for joining me and stay tuned for more of our application delivery how-to videos.